we need a show of hands. How many would say today is Palm Sunday? Raise your hand. Is it Palm Sunday? Okay, about half of you. So the other half have to play with this. This next question, how many of you would say it's the Sunday of the Passion? Sunday of the Passion? Now we have two hands, don't we? So don't be confused. Although it is a confusing day, isn't it? Everybody's looking around and saying, well, why are we starting back there? Where is the choir? What's going on? Is it Palm Sunday or is it the Sunday of the Passion? Am I to be happy and celebrate? Am I to be sad and upset? Is it a funeral? Are we grieving? Am I allowed to applaud and praise God for coming through the children and to us and helping us on this confusing day? We are a people oftentimes confused. <clears throat> Am I a sinner? Am I a saint? Am I saved by God? Am I unworthy of this salvation? And there's just no way I can be lifted up. Yes, both at the same time. In the midst of the confusion, the Lord calls us to worship. And we are used to this kind of confusion. At first, we're celebrating and we're singing praises to God. Sing us now, Hosanna. And then that very celebration turns destructive and ends with death, the death of our Savior. Think for a moment of other celebrations, other things that get you jazzed. Now, what excites you? What inspires you to celebrate? Maybe it's a sports game. I mean, did you hear about the fella willing to give up his wife just for tickets for the basketball game? Yeah. That's a happy marriage. <laughs> I mean, what turns into innocent fun and rooting for your team can oftentimes be destructive, right? How many times do we hear people acting crazy? Right? Celebrating? Victorious? Yes! Full of excitement? And then, behaviors that lead to their own personal self-destruction, breaks up families, breaks up neighbors, causes all kind of hardship and misery. Destruction soon follows. Time and time again, our parties, our celebrations, our victory chants. So on this day, it should be no different. It parallels life. We start with a victory chant. Save us, Lord. Hosanna. You're the one. Now things are going to get going. All that injustice, all of those things which are wrong, they are going to be corrected here and now. Hosanna. We praise you, Lord. Make it so. And then, confusion. The people are led astray. And how easily we all are led astray. When someone gets in your face and they say, are you saved? And you say, I am a sinner and I'm a, a saint. I am saved and yet there's nothing that I did to deserve this salvation. Yes, but are you saved? And they get in your face and they won't accept your answer. They say, you can't be both. One or the other. Are you for Christ or against him? And you say, I am a sinner and I am a saint. Well, then the confusion just continues. Enter Jesus on a donkey. Is he a king or is he a wimp? Is he going to save us? He can't save himself. Jesus. His name parallels Joshua's. And at the root, their names are the same. Remember Joshua led God's people from the desert of sin through the river Jordan to 
the promised land. Jesus leads his people, draws them out of the desert of sin through the Jordan River where he was baptized. Through those baptismal waters that wash and cleanse us. And he leads us to our promised land, salvation, where things are right. We can't get there on our own. We might feel like we can, but we can't. Some people might say, just follow me, you'll be safe. I'll get you there. They're lying. Only Jesus Christ can get us through those waters of baptism and to the place where we are secure. Please don't be confused. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And in the midst of all these apparently fun celebrations, He has to be in the center of them all. Somewhere in your heart, in that happiness, in those victory marches, He has to be there. He leads us from those deserts to that promised land. Who was it in our gospel lesson who confessed his faith? The 39th chapter, the 15th, 39th verse of the 15th chapter of Mark. Who was it that everybody looked at and said, well, he's just here because it's his job. He has to be here. He's not really a believer or follower. Who was it that confessed his faith? Confessed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. The centurion. We have to remember that because we're so easily confused. We look at one another and we see people all the time. We make judgments and we say, well, you know, that white person and that black person shouldn't be together. It's confusing, right? Or, you know, that person that smells shouldn't be here. Or, those kids are too loud, glad they're gone. God's own people get in the way of the celebration, huh? And so we're confused and we make all these judgments and we pass all these rules and we say all these things that bring nothing but shame and heartache. And it leads us back into the desert of sin. The Lord is drawing us to His own sacrifice out of the desert into the promised land through those waters of baptism. Drink those waters. Bathe in those waters. If your own thoughts are misleading you or confusing you, give them up and just wash again and be renewed in the presence of the Lord. If your own prejudice and your own expectations are in the way of celebrating what Christ has done for us and continues to do, then just give them up and go back to that time on the cross. Lord, help us, draw us out of that desert of sin into the promised land that we all might have a part to play in making that picture of your glory. You've given each of us something important to share. Help us, equip us, empower us to come together for your glory and make that picture glorious. Lift me out of that desert. Bring me to the promised land. Wash me with those waters again, Lord. We're going to process in a little bit for Holy Communion. And we're going to taste the body and blood of Christ. A wafer, a wine. His real presence draws us. Don't be confused. The presence of Christ himself nourishes us. Physically and spiritually. Fully. Really. And each and every one of us taste His presence and share His presence. And no one is excluded. 
Lord, wash us, prepare us, make us whole as we bow before you. We confess, we fall short, we are sinners. And just when we think we're alone, we're saved. We're your children. We're celebrating. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us who are here. We can't do it alone. Christ is doing it with us. So overcome those confusing moments and include all of those whom Christ has died to save. Don't doubt it. Believe. Because if he could die for me, he could certainly die for that person or that person or whoever is coming to your mind. Lead us, Lord, in that procession to your grace. Fill us and then have us process out into all of your creation and share this life-saving good news. Have us not be confused, but to process out into your creation, fully committed. Others might look at us and say, oh, I don't know about that person. Let's convince them with a testimony and a simple confession. Yes, I am a sinner. Jesus has made me a saint. And he loves you. He is my savior. He has brought me out of these waters. Refreshed and renewed. And I've got to share him with you. Be the centurion. The one nobody expected to confess publicly. Be that one and say, the Lord is so outstanding. I've got to share him with you. But you never did it before. My bad. But it's good. Share it now. Thank you, Lord, for handing us the ability and the opportunity to share your saving victory. May we process to your altar and to all of your children throughout the world. Amen.